Hello everyone, today I'm gonna make my own Japanese divider panel. I'll be covering the entire process from creating the artwork to actually creating it and piecing it all together. What inspired this video was having to watch many YouTube videos where artists created something like a water bottle or an old book to something awesome. And I wanted to create something similar, but something that not many people have done before, or at least I couldn't find anyone doing this. But regardless, I decided to take a month uh, out of my life and see if I could create my own Japanese divider panel. Listen. The first step was planning out where should I put my artwork. Before I create any sketches, um, the last thing I want is create a art piece that wouldn't fit inside the frame because I neglected to take the time and see where the final artwork would be displaying at. And I refuse to waste my time and or crop something if I could avoid it and all. It took me a minute to figure out the perfect ready to go frame with a minimal modification. Um, it took a good look into my room and realized that I had this IKEA shelf that I purchased a long time ago. And I said this was perfect to start with. So I went to the IKEA website looking for this specific shelf and found out it was uh it was called a ivar 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 shelf i bought four of them uh, i bought the 12 by 17 standalone frame once i got it uh, i made sure to write the dimension of the inner frame because i was going to put the artwork inside here and doing so uh, i started my own pc open up my uh, clip studio paint open up a new file input the measurement i wrote down made sure the resolution was set up to 350 dpi because i wanted to print this out uh, once everything was ready just click ok and i was ready to start drawing so this is the easiest part of the process just follow these three steps and you will be golden step one get your reference remember getting your reference makes your whole life easier once you are satisfied with your selection, move on to step two. Step two, starting sketching. Now retain the detail from your reference and start sketching. Just imagine how it would look like based on your reference and move on to step three. Step three, rendering. Finally, do another pass, but this time add the color, the light source, and everything you need to look good in a social media platform. Then there you go. You got four finished artwork ready to print. Now that I have four finished artwork, we gotta save this on a TIFF file. And it is time to print this out. If any of you want to create this in the future, let me tell you. You're gonna have to find a way to print this. Remember this isn't a normal standard size paper like A4 or other. You need a printer that prints out a 9 uh, 1 4 by 67 inches. Um, I suggest you scavenge around your local area for a print shop and ask them if they could print this for you. I tried looking for it on demand prints but didn't have much luck. Maybe you guys could find one. The other option is which I invested a few months ago is buying myself a professional printer. This is the Epson P700. This is a awesome printer. One of the fancy mode that the Epson P700 has is this roller paper in the back side of the machine. With this, you could essentially print a long paper, just uh, what we need. That is, if I don't run out of paper or ink. And also, the printer is only constrained by 13 inches wide. Any wider would be a no-no. Okay, now this is a critical point of the process. Uh, setting up your printer settings you will be surprised that how many people will just click print without checking the settings once you open up your printer layer program for my case is the Epson print layer make sure you're using the right printer what type of paper the printer is gonna print on this is very important because it tells the printer the surface of your paper tell it to where the paper is coming from Tell your printer that you want the quality to be to the max and lastly adjust the orientation and the color settings and after that 
you can go ahead and press print. Usually I print out a small portion of the print to see if everything looks okay. But um, I'm so confident that uh, on myself that I didn't need to do that. Make sure while you're printing, you have something to catch it with. You don't want the paper to uh, smudge all over the floor and potentially ruin the prints. Once all four artwork are printed out, uh, I just needed to trim off the empty spaces and I was done. While I was um, trimming down the prints, it, it occurred to me that I needed to know how to slap my prints to this hollow wooden frame. So I thought about it and decided I needed to go to my local home improvement store which is Home Depot. Here I bought a half inch wire 4 by 8 feet uh, plywood. I asked the store employee if they could cut this to my desired shape and they told me no, they can't. Now I needed to know how to cut this but luckily for me I asked my stepfather if I could borrow his table saw and other tools to create the, the frame. He told me yeah, he isn't using the tools at the moment so I was very relieved. For a moment there, I thought the project was halted. But the rest of the trip was buying some hinges, foot pads, a Gorilla adhesive spray bottle, also a Gorilla glue bottle, and finally some trims to add around the artwork. So, once I got back home with all the materials I needed, I went up and set up the table saw that I borrowed from my stepfather and cut off four long bore based on the measurement I had previously. After the cut, uh, I made sure the board would fit inside the IKEA frame. Once that was reassuring, I glue on both parts together with the Gorilla wood glue. Uh, and for added measure, I also nailed it in with the nail gun left it overnight to get a cure by the next morning it was time to add the artwork uh, to the flat surface looking back at this uh, i should have cleaned the surface of the board before spraying adhesive all over because one of the artwork was a stain on the board and has some few bubble pockets so i had to peel it off and reapply it again but with this time more coverage and more adhesive. Um, I added some heavy books to keep the artwork on the board while the glue is curing. I left the pressing down for a minute or two before I move on to the next. During the home temper trip, I planned to add some simple trim but, uh, until uh, my eye caught wind of this beautiful trim right here. The only problem was the length. It was too small. So the solution right here was to add more uh, pieces together and snap off the rest until I make the full frame. And after all this, I had to meld it in all together one piece at a time for a total of four times. It took a while, but I did it. Finally, the last day was installing the hinges for all four panels. Uh, I do wish I had some second companion to hold it up for me um, while I was installing the, the hinges. Uh, there were times that I got scared of bumping into them and not catching them in time when they were falling. Regardless of this fear, I made sure to check the panel closing appropriately checking for any disaffect or anything that needed to be fixed on the last minute. And lastly, I just needed to add this foot pad so it wouldn't scratch the, the floor. The 
So after days of planning and drawing and executing the final product, I'm happy to see that everything came together. That being said, I would like to take a moment of your time and ask you to subscribe to the channel and like this video. This will really help me see if people are enjoying this type of video. I will be very grateful for any feedback, of course. Thank you for taking the time to check out this video. I do hope um, you wonderful people have a nice day. Adios, my fellow creators, and I'll see you on the next video. Listen. Nani? Puchi. Puchi Lina. <laughs>